Welcome to the first offering of the Social Action Office's 2024 Lunch and Learn. Um, I'm Deacon Kent Ferris, the Director of Social Action, and I'll be your host for uh, today's Lunch and Learn. The topic is Catholic Relief Services Rice Bowl Collection, and we will begin in prayer. I'm using a, a prayer from Catholic Relief Services. We haven't seen the cardboard rice bowl promotional materials yet, and so I'm using a different uh, prayer from CRS for our opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our refuge, our ever-present help in trouble, your promises hold true. This we know. This we pray. For the widow, the refugee, the orphan, those who are too weak, too tired, too broken to cry out to you. When mountains shake, when leaders fail, when all seems absolutely, irretrievably, impossibly lost, you enter. We thank you for your presence. We pray we receive your deliverance. Your eyes are on the righteous. Your ears are attentive to their cry. You are close to the brokenhearted. You save those crushed in spirit. You rescue your servants. And still, lest we forget all those who, suffering today, will still be in this moment, a week, a month, a year from now, remind us to pray for the widow, the refugee, the orphan, that your promises still hold true. You are still our help in trouble, ever-present, our refuge, our God. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are, let me see if I can do a full screen show. I'm not seeing the means of doing the full screen. Isn't Maybe it I'll... under view? There we go. All right. Part of the reason for mentioning all of this is not only the beginning of a new year, but for us, the season of Lent begins on Ash Wednesday. And in 2024, it begins on Wednesday, February 14th, which as lunar cycles go is puts us about as early as possible on the calendar for the beginning of Lent and then Easter falling on the last day of March. For those who help us with promotion of the CRS Rice Bowl collection in our diocese, in, across our diocese in parishes, um, we wanted to make sure that we have both this live event now as well as provide a recording for it in order that uh, parishes have the opportunity to, to be prepared and not merely uh, turn the calendar to February and realize that they're within a week or two of the beginning of Lent. The, um, the CRS Rice Bowl collection is um, one that has had a, a long history, um, as has Catholic Relief Services uh, in general for uh, the ways that we've responded to the needs of people living in poverty all around the world, but it is a U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops uh, campaign. The Eucharist is the sacrament par excellence of love. Christ offers himself and breaks himself for us and asks us to do likewise so that our life might become bread that feeds our brothers and sisters. Uh, a quote from Pope Francis. And this Lent, we reflect on how the Eucharist unites us with God and one another as members of the same body of Christ, how the Lord invites us to see him in our global family. We have, as um, spiritual pillars of Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving as part of our lives uh, 
regularly and in, in an especial way during Lent, uh, the season of preparation for, for Easter. To give you some idea of the scope of this particular collection, it affects not only uh, individuals living in poverty around the world, but also in our own community. So 75% of what is collected uh, is given to Catholic Relief serv Services for the projects that they uh, have in place in over 100 countries around the world. 25% of the uh, collection stays in the diocese. We review local grant requests. We do so in June. Uh, often those uh, poverty fighting efforts are addressing local hunger in uh, communities in the 22 counties of the Diocese of Davenport. In preparation for this, I, I was reminded that the, the actual Rice Bowl campaign began in 1975 in order for families here in the U.S. to be able to um, have that visible uh, expression of of Lenten sacrifice, the um, the rice bowl collection is one that uh, is known for the the cardboard rice bowl. It is uh, it is is a well known uh, staple within uh, Catholic parishes and families, and and so that's how um, people have come to know it over time, a, a simple rice bowl and, and coins or dollars put in it. They also talk about how the donations by way of rice bowl help families um, living in extreme poverty. And they give examples of how much it would cost for chickens to provide uh, eggs and uh, a goat to provide both milk and income, as well as what it would take for a household uh, garden for nutrition. Having visited uh, Ethiopia and Tanzania with CRS, I can attest to uh, the gardens that uh, had benefited folks in order for them to have uh, a richer diet um, and also ones that they, they kind of take ownership of. I mentioned the CRS Rice Bowl grants um, here locally, these are the recipients of grants for this past year, about 2023. One of the things that we have a responsibility uh, to do is make sure that parishes are getting their uh, collection materials. Esmeralda Guerrero, Loxie Hopkins, others of us uh, are in constant contact with parish staff and volunteers to make sure that they have um, reviewed the material, the promotional material orders nine months ago, <laughs> and then also that they receive them. Uh, materials come in both English and in Spanish. And so in some cases, if we find that a, a parish has more rice bowl resources than they necessarily need, but a neighbor may not, we will also kind of shuffle uh, the resources, the posters, the, the actual rice bowls uh, around to different parishes. I want to point out that it's really important for um, parishes and all five deaneries to know of this, uh, to know the extent to which the diocese supports the Lenten rice bowl collection but also to take a look at the communities that have benefited by way of Rice Bowl grant monies. Um, we're often reminded that um, the Diocese of Davenport is more than the County of Scott. And so when we see uh, requests and applications from uh, DeWitt and Iowa City and Clinton and Burlington, these are the ones that uh, we really want to those and, and, and a, a bunch of other communities that are addressing hunger, we want them to know more about the uh, relatively simple uh, process for applying for rice bowl money. N the rice bowl money may be a few hundred dollars or $500. It's not enough to uh, completely uh, cover the cost of a feeding program in a community but that type of grant money can be used as leverage in order to get 
uh, stronger or, or larger amounts of money to to address hunger in those communities. And it has everything to do with with all of you and and your fellow parishioners and, and members of your community knowing of that dual responsibility, not only for the global response, but also how it can help local communities. The thing I enjoy about Rice Bowl, when you work in over 100 countries, what they'll do every Lent is they choose different, um, different countries and different country projects to spotlight. And they usually are pretty selective, different continents, for example. Uh, the three that are spotlighted for 2023 are, are El Salvador, Uganda, and Indonesia. And um, so when those resources come to you, you get print resources that describe a little bit about each of those three countries. But then if you go to the CRS Rice Bowl website, you can actually uh, view uh, videos from those three countries to share with parishes, uh, parishioner, fellow parishioners, what, what the types of programs are uh, relating to food programs, water programs, or educational programs. Also, as of note on this particular slide, um, there is um, global hunger and then Catholic Relief Service by virtue of what they do and where they do it is also well aware of the impact of climate change on addressing the needs of those living in extreme poverty. And they do a really good job of providing what that lived experience is like for those in those countries. Uganda um, described as the Pearl Africa uh, defined its rich, defined by its rich culture, diverse flora and fauna and engaging people, uh, many natural advantages but continues to face serious developmental challenge, development challenges uh, as a result of the uh, protracted civil war. And so um, CRS has been involved for at least six years in a, a resettlement district. And so they're looking again at, at what they do best, which is water, sanitation, hygiene, as well as uh, looking at educational efforts. In Uganda, where 69% of households obtain their livelihood from subsistence farming, agriculture continues to be important for their GDP, as well as being a major source of employment. And so they have uh, various projects that some of you may be familiar with before, the Farmer to Farmer program, um, looking at uh, other agroforestry farming systems, as well as coffee value chain development. Uh, they take into account what can grow in uh, locations and then also try to help those who live there be able to provide for better sustainability for themselves and their families. One of the things that I also watch to make sure is um, that with El Salvador, the next country that we're uh, sharing is that there are times when there are people living in our diocese from the spotlighted countries. And uh, so as an example, when we had the Philippines highlighted years ago, one of our priests who grew up in the Philippines was able to attest to what he had remembered of CRS growing up. Uh, likewise, we do have uh, members of our diocese who are from El Salvador. And so this is an opportunity for them to see the ways that their home country continues to be supported. And um, then they can attest to the value that is being undertaken. In, in El Salvador, again, as the slide notes, one in five El Salvadorans have immigrated. And income equality between rural and urban areas is severe. Low economic growth and high levels of violence and insecurity uh, continue to affect Salvadoran society in profound ways. So here you're looking at the possibility of crop diversification, soil and water conservation, reforestation. Um, they are 
attempting to make sure that home countries uh, can remain uh, vibrant, uh, resilient, and taking into account any changes that have occurred. Uh, Haiti is another example, though Haiti's not spotlighted this year. They too have had uh, a need to be mindful of, of changes that have occurred. Finally, Indonesia as one of the three countries that will be spotlighted, dealing with all kinds of uh, uh, environmental matters, um, both disasters as well as um, illnesses and, and also how the land has been used. Over the last five years, more than 1.5 million people have been directly affected by those natural disasters. And I don't want to confuse, there's kind of different parts of CRS. There is the rice bowl, which supports the the sustaining projects, the water, the growing, the education. CRS continues to be uh, front line uh, for Catholics in the United States in reaching out when we've got natural disasters that occur. CRS is one of, of uh, a family of, of Catholic-related organizations around the world, the Caritas agencies. And so as natural disasters occur, CRS and Caritas continue to be frontline, uh, both for the church as well as being uh, great ambassadors for our country. So those are the three countries that will be spotlighted during the weeks of Lent. And uh, there's also, uh, if you're familiar with the, the Lenten calendar, you, you go from um, Ash Wednesday to Easter, and there'll be uh, prayer reflections on the calendar that accompanies the rice bowl card itself. I'm going to stop the screen for a moment. Uh, I want to ask questions of those comments of those that have either experienced rice bowl collection efforts before or are new to it and want to know more specifically about it. And you can see this, what I point to on my on my door back there was the CRS Rice Bowl Collection poster from last year. I haven't received the new one this year, um, but I will, I'll put it up at that time. Uh, comments or questions as to how it's been received uh, in your parish or other questions? Well, Kent, what other materials are supplied? Um, I know the the little rice bowl boxes show up, right. and the bulletin insert is something sent to the to the pastors for uh, from the bishop or from whoever uh, a word of support or promotion or what? The the uh, packet of information. I thought I might have still had the, the actual packet from last year. What you'll have is a cover letter to the pastor or the parish. It includes um, bilingual posters, uh, the, the, the box of the rice bowls themselves, and they've normally got the, uh, the calendar that accompanies the rice mm -hmm. bowl attached to the, the rice bowl boxes. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the promotion of it goes, uh, we will have, by way of the Catholic Messenger, uh, the advertisement. We'll run an ad promoting the collection. And there will also be uh, an administrator letter of support. We say administrator in because we don't have a bishop. But normally there's also a bishop's letter that assists with that type of support. Um, and so I don't know if there's also... Then also prior to the collection, there is a letter that goes out to rice bowl coordinators and the parish staff like a week or two before the collection. And that includes like links to the different materials that are available. As important as it is on the front end to have rice bowls in hand on Ash Wednesday, some parishes will actually have them available for Ash Wednesday, the distribution of ashes. If, if your parish can have it 
at play to have those available then or at least the first Sunday of Lent. That's really that's really helpful. Uh, I, I remember Father Greg Steckel when he was in West Liberty, who would actually bless the rice bowls. That was good. On the back end, it is as important to make sure that the parish after Lent is over is timely mm. in getting the money back to the diocese in order for us to know how uh, how much there is that we will in turn be able to distribute. It's not you didn't ask the question, but in 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 really good years, we approach a hundred thousand mm. uh, dollars that comes by way of a relatively simple, uh, rice bowl. Um, yes, we do get coins and we do get people that put uh, either checks or cash in those rice bowls and, and turn them in at the parish. Um, there are also other people who opt not to do that and give directly to rice bowl. They give it directly to CRS. And the, the, the amazing thing about it is CRS knows who gave and where they're from and routes 25% of what they give back to the diocese. So I, I, I applaud CRS for their incredible commitment to donor intent. You know, so if, if Kent writes a check for a hundred bucks and just sends it to Baltimore, $25 comes back to the diocese as, as was the stated intention. You know, I'd also mention that um, it's a great activity for schools. I mean, kids absolutely love it. And I know there's been some that have done some really cool things um, with the rice balls and, and raising money. If you have either schools or religious ed groups that you have connections with, mm -hmm. we're now at a point by way of being able to access YouTube that we've had youth who've actually taken it upon them within their class at school or within religious ed to be able to be the person that shows that mm. particular week's spotlighted YouTube video for, for, for purposes of promotion. Um, yeah, we've had over the time, um, over, over time, we've had some incredibly creative ways to uh, generate um, rice bowl and and uh challenge kind of challenge each other too there's nothing there's a there's nothing more inspiring than to see a, a child give <laughs> sacrificially mm -hmm. to a to a lenten collection and i think that a good part of why that's possible is because crs in the images that they provide the the mm -hmm the the information that's so consistent with our catholic faith as well as the life affirming stories that you see by way of youtube you can be assured that there it is kind of the best expression of of love of neighbor on a global scale and and you know you can you can appreciate the sincerity of how the materials are provided and also uh kids's response to it at St. Anne's, we had a very um, dynamic rice bowl uh, collection one year when the, a former pastor on the first Sunday of Lent blessed the rice bowls and allowed us to speak um, about the rice bowl collection. And uh, we made a presentation suggesting that you place the rice bowl on your kitchen table and every time you get a drink of water think of the people who have to hike five miles to get water to bring to their village and put a quarter or a dime into the uh, into the rice bowl for each time you do that and we made several other suggestions comparing the blessings that we have here to the conditions in many of the rice bowl countries. And then it was recommended <clears> that <throat> um, at the offering, the children bring forward their rice bowl collection for the week. 
Mm-hmm. We wanted, we didn't want a single rice bowl collection, but we wanted to keep it in the minds of people for the whole period of Lent. So at each of the offerings during Lent, the children would bring forward their rice bowls and empty them into a large basket that we uh, purchased from my um uh, a store that specializes in goods from other countries. This was a very large African basket. And the kids would all come forward, put their uh, rice bowl money in, and go traipsing back. That was kind of something that was good to see. And the kids loved it. Last year's amazing story dealt with a middle schooler who opted to make cheesecakes and sell them and put money into uh, her rice bowl, generating over a thousand dollars. It was all, it was good. It was really good because for all of the times that you're, you, you, some folks give up things that they're not going to eat in Lent. Well, I didn't have to give up cheesecake because I bought one, one of her cheesecakes. And so it was a, it was a win-win of sorts. I was going to mention when we when Glenn remarked about the lack of water. A number of years ago, a group of us from the diocese went with Catholic Relief Service to Guatemala. And I will never forget, um, at one part of the trip, we went way up into a mountain to a small village up there that was very isolated. And on the way, we saw people getting what We saw streams with people washing their clothes in it animals standing in the same stream and people getting buckets of water and carrying on their head um, out of that same stream. Um, But these people had um, a water project that CRS had helped them with. And they told us they thought we might feel sorry for them, but they didn't want us to because they had water. And it really set me back thinking how Often, I didn't think of that when I turned down the faucet, how lucky we are and um, how some people suffer so that don't have water in their countries. And I'm just so grateful that we have, um, as part of our church, CRS, that's doing those amazing kind of things in those countries. Lindsay uh, reminds us of an event that uh, youth ministry in West Point undertook, um, a promotional effort. And uh, the youth minister at the time was uh, portraying the Godfather and uh, talked about the importance (laughs) of of giving. And then I think that that same youth ministry group took the recipes that are part of the the, uh, calendar that accompanies Rice Bowl and actually made them. So here again... um, the opportunity to share a meal based on uh, one that would be specific to the particular country is another way of of having that uh, sense of solidarity, uh, breaking bread, and as Pope Francis referenced, uh, bringing back to the core of, of the Eucharist is is so very important. I would also add, in addition to uh, the countries that are focused by way of rice bowl a continued reminder of what will be global hot spots this year um we get information from um uh the un refuge un refugee agency unhcr and um, also look at what crs is uh telling us of areas that will continue to uh, make news, hopefully, and that we will uh, want to know more about. Um, Gaza might be at the number one list in the present moment. More than 19,000 people have been killed, 70% of whom are women and children. Nearly 2 million people, or 85% of Gaza's population, have been displaced. Nearly all of those forced from their homes report that they do not have enough to eat. Many have crowded into schools, churches, hospitals, homes, and shelters, but thousands are living outside without safe shelter, without an immediate cessation of violence and an increase of humanitarian corridors, 
widespread suffering will continue. Um, CRS and Caritas are, are uh, present in, in prying, trying to provide humanitarian aid. Um, so too, Ukraine, the war in Ukraine continues. And really here you've got the Caritas agencies that work with CRS to make sure that the millions who have been either uh, internally displaced or are in neighboring countries continue to have the type of food items that they need uh, for purposes of uh, support to provide the basics of shelter, food, water. Um, we do have Central America by virtue of uh, climate change and uh, ongoing violence excuse me, that continues to provide incredible challenges for those that leave their country and feel that they have no other opportunities, but also those that uh, stay in place. Afghanistan um, continues to be uh, a humanitarian crisis. October, there were the series of, of earthquakes uh, thousands were killed. Many were left without homes. Here again, um, the uh, the work that is being done by humanitarian agencies, including the Caritas and CRS network, is is uh, visible. Sudan, as we had mentioned, or, or Uganda was what we had talked about earlier, but Sudan is um, is continuing to have uh, a great need for humanitarian assistance. And then uh, the Central Sahel region of Africa, there are nearly 3 million people fleeing their homes in a search for safety. It's a lot to take in at any one point, but I think that there's a, a couple of things I would say. Um, we always talk about we're not either or, but we're and people. And so Catholic Relief Service continues to do outstanding work at the basics, which are food, water, educational efforts, the, the longer sustainability building efforts, while also dealing with disaster. And hmm. we've worked with CRS as long as we have to know that CRS is also seen as a, a credible nonprofit in the eyes of the United States government as it relates to US aid funded projects. And so um, when we approach elected officials and we're talking about broader terms of, of aid for disaster and development, we will often go and attest to the work that our faith tradition does by way of Catholic relief services. And um, elected officials and their staff know of us. And we often talk about CRS being those who do the work in country. It, my, my challenge is for us to begin to think about ourselves as part of CRS because of the, the importance that we have in, in Lenten and sacrificial giving, as well as uh, to continue to educate and inform those of us those that represent us in our, our nation's capital. So it really is a, it's an us effort. And, and it's important that we talk about this to other Make sure to put your microphone down, Glenn. There you go. I keep forgetting. Uh, the It's important for us to remember that we're fighting an uphill battle in many areas. A lot of folks have the impression that the United States is very generous with uh, humanitarian foreign aid uh, and expressed in dollars, we do give a lot, but expressed as a percentage of the total federal budget in many years, it's less than 1%. Mm. If I would also say that if you um, have not liked um, <clears throat> CRS on Twitter and on Facebook, I would encourage you to do that because you get a lot of information, including um, from some workers by name, actually, that are in Gaza. Um, one worker talked about having 80 people sheltered in her house. Um, <laughs> I don't know 
if her house is still standing or what's happened to her since she was on Twitter with that. Um, the thing is, is we know that Catholic Relief Service people are in Gaza um, trying to do the best that they can do um, under the circumstances. And it's, um, I, I one time we went to um, Baltimore and we're at the headquarters of CRS and they have like a courtyard. And when you walk around the courtyard, there's pictures of so many young people that have died in these countries that they're there serving. Um, it really, really hits you how dedicated people are um, to work for CRS. Um, I just couldn't say enough good about CRS and their staff. Yeah, there's the the staffing of CRS in any get in one of the hundred countries. Ninety five percent of the staff are folks local from that to that country, and so when you have a war or a disaster or some a famine, the the CRS staffers are living it. They they have to account for their families, some of whom have died. And yet they still show up to the job knowing that they've got a responsibility. Mm. Their part of CRS is to be present, uh, physically present uh, to uh, neighbors. And, and so it really does uh, make giving, uh, sacrificial giving something pretty powerful. The other thing I would add to Loxie's comment about social media if you are aware of what your parish has in place as far as Facebook, as an example, and you have the means of talking to whoever manages that Facebook page for your parish, ask them to like CRS and CRS Rice Bowl in particular in order that it will feed into your parish's social media exposure. I mean, I think that that alone has the potential for really helping visibility beyond merely uh, if you happen to be sitting in a pew with rice bowls at the end of, of the pew. Um, so that social media can really be helpful uh, to us as far as continuing to expand the number of parishes or schools that connect with CRS. Before I forget, and again, this has to do with resolutions for 2024, the, the session is recorded. Not everybody was able to be with us over the lunch hour. February, Thursday, February 1st is the next time that we'll have a lunch and learn. Uh, the broad topic is immigration. Mm -hmm. um, we hope to have uh, some uh, more updates as to what is happening and the ways that the Catholic Church is uh, mindful of the needs of, of some pretty desperate folks in light of, of what is happening regarding immigration and like new arrivals in our country. Um, I'm going to leave it kind of broad <laughs> because as this as we develop the content for the next one, we know that there are going to be a number of developments that will happen within the next month. Um, the uh, mm -hmm. network of, of dioceses and Catholic charities across the country that are already involved in responding is one that um, there on occasion, there will be these periodic convenings that occur so that dioceses uh, can talk with each other to understand what each is doing. Um, the, the, the challenge that any locale is, is facing in the United States is a, is a formidable one. And so I hope that we'll have some opportunities to hear from some folks that can tell more about the ways that the church is responding to um, the immigration in this moment. Kent? Yes. Yeah, this is Joe. Um, this is new to me, so I'm just trying to get more uh, background on this. Right. And I apologize. I've got a sinus congestion thing here. I'm Ooh. under the weather a little bit. I um, understand that the main effort here is for CRS and the Rice Bowl effort for the international, for those countries in need. 
that we've determined the diocese right. or the church has determined where to go. Right. But you did comment something as far as if I if I recall correctly about some distribution to the local communities. Local yes. Communities. So 25% of what's collected for Rice Bowl is then eligible for distribution. They're, they're, it's a grant process. And if you go to the diocese uh, web page and go to the social action office, you'll actually see a tab for CRS Rice Bowl. And it is there where you can um, learn about how a hunger fighting effort in a community could submit a request for Rice Bowl grant monies to be able to help with their effort. Okay. Um, there, as an example, in the Metro, there's a, a program that supports um, children in an after school educational program. And they have historically received Rice Bowl grant monies to provide for snack items for children who who live in poverty but are attempting to bolster their education. That was an example of where Rice Bowl money uh, has has helped a local effort. Um, Super. <laughs> but it, and it, I wanted to I want to make sure to understand as far as grant writing application processes, this may be one of the most simple and straightforward that people will have. You don't need a professional grant writer in order to do this. Um, the late Mary Louise Caponette from Muscatine on personal stationery, God bless her. She would write, and, and she, she ran a program called Loaves and Fishes in Muscatine. Uh, Saturday lunch at the homeless oh, shelter cool. and she just wrote dear crs rice bowl people please provide rice bowl money for loaves and fishes sincerely mary louise and she was a rock star and she got her money and she did great things and so that's but it, it's also that particular one and uh, other efforts we've had conversations with recipients that have uh we asked them, are you looking to do a second year with Rice Bowl money? And then they found that there are other grant um, funding streams that they can access and they, they then they don't need the Rice Bowl anymore. And so the, the Rice Bowl funds. Okay. Great. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. The, the Rice Bowl, we distribute that in June of every year. And I think the deadline isn't it um, the middle of May, Esmeralda? May 15th by four o'clock. And so we encourage, uh, if you have programs that help feed the hungry, um, that you apply for that grant. And you said this is on the local uh, diocese uh, website? Correct. If you yeah. go to the Diocese of Davenport's website, and then under the uh, under offices, you go to social action. Okay. And then there's a, a tabs on the left for CRS Rice Bowl. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. It's good to see you all. It's a quarter till the hour. You'll get the rebate uh, on the full hour not used. Um, <laughs> stay safe and healthy. Uh, there's a lot of illnesses that are going around. Um, a quick shout out for Lenten observances. If you're in the Clinton Metro, Peace Soup is a, an incredible uh, opportunity to hear from uh, community groups. Uh, it, it's not only a matter of Nash or not a matter of local efforts that are being undertaken, but you will, you'll also see sometimes where uh, global issues are brought to attention based on um, uh, local experts that can speak to it. Tom Strevler's on with us today. Uh, Peace Soup as a uh, Lenten program is near the top of, of quality parish offerings for the benefit of not only their parish, but the, the greater community. And if you live close enough to be able to get up there, what day of the week is that normally, Tom? Tuesdays, Tuesday, there's three Tuesdays in Lent. 
and we're getting the information to uh, uh, Glenn about it, and uh, it'll be on our Facebook page too. So another another way where we see and um, support those in their pursuit of of uh, of Latin observances. I want to mention um, that oh, if any if anybody um, has an event like that, um, the Catholic Messenger, we can put um, a calendar item on page four during Lent, as space allows. So, um, uh, yeah, that pea soup would be great. Let us know; we can um, we can help you support that for free. Thank you, Lee Mickey. Thank don't you. we have Father John Deere coming to the area at some point in the future? Ann Ellsbecker may be able to unmute herself. She may be able to jump in if Lee doesn't. Okay. One or the other is going to unmute. Ann, you can speak if you want. Okay. He is coming. And I can't remember right this minute if it's March I, or May. Uh, I just received an extensive message from him this morning. Uh, he will be at St. Thomas More March the 3rd, which is a Sunday night. We will have a finger food meal at six o'clock and he will be speaking at seven. Um, Prairie Lights is handling his books. So um, they will take care of uh, all of the uh, business of, of selling them. And um, he's uh, beginning his tour uh, soon. So we're looking forward to him coming again. He's been at St. Thomas several times and we've always had a really good turnout. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you, that's exciting. I think if we ever needed a peacemaker, <laughs> to uh, to, I, now is the time. I consider him tops in nonviolent yeah. yes. mm -hmm. Very good, okay. Thank you very much for your time. Peace and all good. Bye-bye.